Hello, and welcome back to Ultimate Health Radio. Glad you guys could join us again. I'm Dr. Brad Shapiro. I've got another great and exciting topic, at least to me. We're continuing to go down this tools of empowerment. Like I mentioned in the last show, there's several things that if I were to die tomorrow, there are several things that I would really want my son to understand. There are several things that I really think anybody should understand, to understand how to live life more skillfully and to be more successful. And so I've got a list of tools of empowerment. I'm always tweaking these things a little bit, just depending on what pops up, what God's showing me, what I'm learning from all kinds of different angles. But I want to keep plugging through this as is, and this is going to be the content of our next several shows. I'm just going to pick two or three of these per show and plug through them. But I hope you'll find them as interesting as I do, because I really do think they hold a lot of value. So last time we talked about balance, we talked about perseverance, and we talked about discipline. For this show, the first thing I want to talk about is goals. Setting goals are really, really, really important. Uh, there's an old saying, if you aim for nothing, you'll hit it every time. A lot of people really struggle with this idea of setting goals, and I think it ties into any number of different things, and I'm going to kind of intertwine some of these concepts together so you can have a bigger picture. But you need something to shoot for. You need something to really zero in on. Doesn't mean you're going to hit it every time. Doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. Doesn't mean you won't have to alter things here and there. It's funny, I was having a good conversation with a buddy of mine this morning, and he was saying that something that always stuck with him when it came to goals or direction was it was kind of like firing a missile. When a missile's fired, it doesn't go in a straight, direct line from point A to point B. It kind of veers all over the place. It'll kind of go up, down, sideways. It'll get off course a little bit from time to time as it heads to its destination, but eventually it gets there. And so that's what you want goals to be. And doesn't mean you won't tweak them. Doesn't mean you won't have to change your approach in terms of getting there, but you need something to shoot for. This could be business goals. This could be health goals. This could be goals within your relationships. It could be all kinds of different things. And again, that's the idea of these tools of empowerment. They're really fundamental success principles that will cross over into any area of life, whether it's health, whether it's business, whether it's relationships, whether it's finances, whatever. There's some fundamentals that if you'll stick with them, it's at least my opinion that you stand a much better chance of being successful. And I call them tools of empowerment because I think most people walk around feeling very disempowered very inadequate, very broken. We all do to some extent. From a scriptural standpoint, Jesus was sent to heal the brokenhearted. And so I like to touch on these things that will cross over into any area. And for this in, this, in this case, we're talking about goals, because again, I think you need to have goals in all areas of your life. A counterpart to, counterpart to goals is, I think, the idea of commitment. I think a lot of people will not set goals because they don't want to be committed to anything. They want an escape route. They don't want to be held accountable. They don't want to have to keep a commitment. And in many ways, a goal is a commitment. The way I've got commitment uh, defined here, it says a state or quality of being dedicated to a cause. And then I've got another definition. And this is something I'll use a lot in um, when we're talking to various people. It's actually something that I picked up doing jail ministry one of the people that one of the women that we do that with she brought this up during one of the her teachings to the guys and i thought it just made a whole lot of sense but the second definition of commitment is an engagement or obligation that restricts freedom of action i think that idea of freedom i've got it bold on the sheet that i'm looking from i think the idea of giving up certain freedoms is one of the main reasons why people will not make a commitment and therefore set goals if you set a goal or make a commitment, whether it's with a budget, you know, a budget in many ways is a commitment. It's saying I'm going to allot X amount of dollars towards groceries, X amount of dollars towards uh, vacation, X amount of dollars towards utilities and my mortgage, X amount of dollars to any number of things, and I'm going to make a commitment. I'm going to stick with this. Well, part of sticking with it or part of keeping that commitment is you do give up certain freedoms. If your best friend comes to you a week later after you've sat down with your spouse or you've done a budget on your own, whatever the case may be, and says, hey, I really want you to go on this great trip, but oh, the why it's going to cost, oh, by the way, it's going to cost $10,000. If you haven't budgeted for that, and chances are you haven't, 
then you're going to give up the freedom to say yes to that. And that's tough. It's tough to miss out on those things. I'm not sh saying you shouldn't always uh, or you should always stick with the budget that you've laid out. Maybe this is the trip of a lifetime and you really need to do it. But if you go on the trip and you come back and you're crying the blues to everybody that'll listen because you wouldn't keep your commitment of sticking to your budget and not going on that trip, you have to own that. You have to own that decision. And so keeping a commitment is in part giving up the freedom to just do whatever you want to do. And I think for a lot of people that feels very restrictive and therefore they won't set goals and they have a really hard time making progress in various areas of their lives. The same could be true with if you make a commitment that you're going to get adjusted. You know, I'm a chiropractor. If you're going to, you say, man, oh man, I don't care what happens. I'm going to get adjusted once a month because I really found I just, I feel so much better. I feel so much healthier. Statistically, uh, if people that get regular adjustments have increased their immune system by 200%, uh, my musculoskeletal system is going to feel better. My joints are going to feel better. Uh, Chiropractic 101 is about reconnecting the brain to the body. So if my brain is reconnected to my body, just everything's going to function better. But I'm going to make this commitment to get adjusted once a month, no matter what. Well, if you break that and you say, well, I'm just too busy to make it this time, or I don't want to spend the 50 bucks or whatever, you really have to own the fact that six months down the road when you're a train wreck and it feels like you've got one foot in the grave, that very well could have been avoided if you had just kept your commitment. And the same could be true for exercise. If you make a commitment that you're going to meet a friend every morning to go walking for 30 minutes and you break that, you got to own the fact that um, there will be consequences. And so this idea, again, I know I'm kind of circling for many different areas, but a lot of people really struggle making a commitment. It could be within their health. It could be within their marriages. It could be within keeping to a budget, any number of things. But if you don't keep, keep a commitment then there will be consequences. There just always are. But it's important to understand on the front end that in order to keep a commitment, you're going to have to give up the freedom to do whatever you want to do. And that part's very ironic. It's very ironic that we all seek out having more freedom and more ability to do what we want to do. But on the same token, if we don't keep commitments, we actually lose a lot of our freedom. From a financial standpoint, if you don't keep your commitment to stick with that budget, you may have to foreclose on your house. You may have to file for bankruptcy. If you don't keep your commitment to do the things you need to do to stay healthy, drink more water, get adjusted, eat a healthy diet, take your supplements, get good rest. If you don't keep that commitment, you actually give up the freedom that goes along with a body that works properly. Because remember, your body's your vehicle. Whether your goals are to go traveling, play with grandkids, go golfing, whatever, if you don't keep your commitment to keep that body healthy, then when all the dust settles, you actually lose a lot of freedom because you don't have the body that gives you the freedom to enjoy certain things. So just want to throw that out there. I think that's something that is really important for people to understand. I'm going to stop there, but think about goals. Think about commitment. Think about how those two intertwine. And think about how those things could add value to your life in any number of ways. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and we will talk to you next time and continue down this list of tools of empowerment. Thanks.